Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's do this, Chris. All right, people, you know what it is. My name is Gil. I'm the American Cholo. Of course, I got a big right. booboo bear in the house. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? Chris, oh, Chris, Chris, Chris you're Chris, fucking Chris, up my Chris, intro. Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris has been on vacation. <laughs> been on vacation, a little rusty there. It's all right. I'll let you slide. Right. <laughs> and it's my pleasure to introduce you. The actor, the living legend, the man, the myth, the legend, Big Concrete. Homie, what's going on, player? <laughs> what's up, dude? What's going on? on? Thank you guys for having me, man. No, I appreciate it. Well, we almost had to kidnap Concrete. <laughs> let's, 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 yeah. let's, let's tell people the truth, Concrete, man. Concrete was ghosting me for like about two months. Bro. Man, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I've had fools ghost me for a year and they come on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so last week, we went to the video shoot out in South Central, right? And then we pulled up. And who do we see, man? You see this guy right here. Oh yeah. Front and center. Front and center. Boo, boo, yeah. boo, I can't believe I uh, didn't know who he was yet. No, I didn't. No. And, I, and, I, and I pulled up. I said, oh, hell no. This was over here. Yeah. Concrete's probably, who the hell is this mad man? Like, fool, I've been looking for you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how he pulled up. Yeah, yeah. In the neighborhood. <laughs> so, yeah. I've been looking for you. He's like, what the fuck was this guy? And it wasn't like subtle. It was like a like screech <laughs> with the tires. Hey, but the cholo, at least I put my hazard lights on, too. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, safety first. Yeah, oh, shit. Yeah. So, yeah, I pulled up. Up on Concord. What's up, Concord? Now, right away, you know what? You're a gentleman. You like to do that. Instagram is kind of weird. Uh, here's my number. I got your number like that. Yeah. We, we shut the shit right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool, man. It was, it was cool. We got so, it done. And now you're on the platform. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for having me, man. This is dope, man. No, that's right. Because I've been watching your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been watching you guys' stuff. And you know, like I told you then, I was like, yo, I, I like it. There's a sense of education behind it. And that's it's right. not just, uh, you know, just talking out of your ass yeah yeah and, well, and then and and then you tend to do your homework so yeah, we, we 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 try to kind of mix everything together because what we're trying to do here at the end is educate oh boy yeah we are trying to educate but we're also trying to we're, well we're trying to build a platform where i can bring guys like you on well, well help the platform grow but then people get to know who you are and we can rise together my man. yeah yeah thank you man gracias so, I appreciate so it. let's get a little bit into your story man mm -hmm. um where were you born and raised i was born in van nuys and i was raised in san fernando all right what year was this I was born in 85, about so I grew up, uh, I was like a baby living on Blythe Street. Andale, wey. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So my parents were like, yo, that was a little tough. And then they went to San Fernando, it wasn't any better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, uh, yeah, man, I, I basically, I learned the game. Real quick. You know, butterflies and everything, butterflies and the bees and all that good stuff on. Uh, on the block. On the block in San Fernando. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. man. Yeah. So, it why didn't you become a cholo, man? What happened to you, man? I, I wanted to. That was, you know, that was like, your dream or yeah, what? Well, yeah, hell yeah. Because growing up in the '90s, you <laughs> yeah. know, like growing up in the '90s, and especially in LA, yeah. it was like that was the culture. You know, it, it, it didn't matter where you grew up at. Yeah, yeah. It was a culture that was captivating, and it captivated the like the, you know the Southern California pretty you know pretty heavily you know so exactly. to me it was like to me it was just second nature it's like they had the girls, they had uh, the cars, they had the dope parties, they had the cruising. So I used to live on. Uh, Lower Canyon and San Fernando Mission. Oh, where okay. in the, oh, where, you know, you know, we're in San Fernando. Yeah. That was like everybody from the valley was there every Sunday, every yeah, Friday, right. Saturday, and Sunday. The after canyon. they were cruising the canyon, I so <laughs> I would just literally walk outside of my house, walk about a half a block on Varna. Yeah, I used yeah. to live on Varna, and then I used to walk a block up, and it was like it was all there. And it was like, you know, I would see the girls coming out the cars and just you know, like doing all the crazy, and you know, people turning around, flipping. And getting numbers, and it was just a party to me, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then oh, occasionally, mm -hmm. you know, people get shot. Oh, oh, oh I you know? say yeah, yeah. that it's, when you were young, it used to be like when the lights when the lights come on outside. That's when uh, that's when you go in. But in, in Lower Canyon, you go in is when somebody starts shooting. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. It was. I mean, it, it never failed. There was some kind of fight or something. You, you got busted for dope. Yeah, so I got busted for dope in two thousand. I want to. I want to say two thousand eight, seven or something right. like that. Yeah. And then uh. Yeah, dude, it just fucking seemed like an eternity. So, no, the, uh, How much so, time did you do that time? Oh man, just, just it was fighting just, it. in and out. Oh, I, oh, oh, like oh no, dude, I got bailed out. Like oh, I, I got bailed out during the week. Like it happened on a Thursday night. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was like by Sunday, I was yeah. gone. Oh, okay, Hell, yeah, no, but I had gotten super comfortable. Yeah. Like I was getting comfortable. Like I remember, uh, you know, the you know, I, I think the first day. You know, I had never done any kind of time, like yeah, no yeah. juvenile hall. I had done, you know, like I had gotten arrested for stuff, but, you know, I, it was more community service. So I never yeah, really saw like. You saw the inside of a I, I never, glass house. yeah, <laughs> or nothing, you know, like, like not even, you know, like nothing, yeah, you nothing. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I remember like the, the first day I was there, it's like, shit, that's when shit got real to me because I'm a, I like, I like to eat, bro. I like, I, I'm, I'm always eating, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I like to have my food and I like to have what I have, you know? So when I got there, it was like, they, I remember they gave me. They did like roll call or something. They're like, yo, can we, can we get your food away? And they're, they're handing like a little bag and it had an apple that looked like the size of a grape. <laughs> and then, 
the cheese was, sandwich and the cheese about that yeah. big. Yeah, and then it was like it was like a cold ass like a, a burrito. I think it was a burrito or something oh, okay. like something. It was, it was yeah. dog. It was just horrible, and I was like, man, fuck this. And I've seen other dudes were like, oh man, finally. Finally, they gave I was food. like, oh, I was like, yeah. fine. I was like, fuck yeah. that. <laughs> And then the second day, I think it was like the same shit. And I was already like, all right, cool, whatever. You know, I'll eat. And then uh, I think it was like that, that Sunday uh, when I was, I didn't know I was about to get out. I had talked about, you know, I had talked to people about getting, but you know, bailing yeah. me out. At the time I was signed. So the people that I was signed to, they were like actively trying to get me out. And yeah. eventually like, you know, worked, like it worked ev- out for you. eventually we came up with the money and they were like, yeah. yo, let's get this boy out. You know, so yeah. I remember I was, I was starting to, I had some dudes have left already. Some dudes had checked out already, right? So they had left and some bunk beds opened up and I was like, fuck yeah. So I got mine. I started making my little bed. I got comfortable, <laughs> took off my shoes and the game was about to start. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, Gutierrez, uh, you're out of yeah, here. Yeah. I was like, well, Good guys, on. it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, fellas, I'll see you guys later, yeah, man. Yeah, you yeah. guys have a good one, dog. <laughs> Hopefully you guys figure it all out yourselves. I, I, you, I know? It, you never went back. Fuck no, I was it. That was it. Okay, I so us, never again. Give us a secret that way fools won't get popped. You can put it out here. Huh? Give us a secret how fools, fools yeah. won't get popped. How did you get popped? How did you get busted? Uh, have people around you that are not gonna just turn on you. Is that what happened to you? Yeah. Oh Jesus, that's, that's the name of the game. That's what happened. Yeah, so it was a mistake. Shit. I mean, it wasn't a mistake because I think I think the dude just fuck you know like folded under pressure. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, like we we were going to a studio in Hollywood for that purpose. It was like 11 o'clock at night. They called me up. They were like, yo, you know, like, we need some goods. Hey, we need some stuff. Like, these guys are trying to party all night, record all night. I was like, I got it. Yeah. Tell me where it's at. So we went down there, and I remember we were going down Highland from the 170. So you, okay, yeah, if yeah. you're going south on uh, south of the 170, mm-hmm. you go all the way down on Highland, and you make the left on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we made that left, uh, there was a cop going to make a right on the opposite end. Uh-huh. So we made a left really slow and saw that my boy didn't have his seatbelt on. <laughs> So he pulled us over immediately. Yeah. He pulled us over. And then uh, we had been smoking on the way down from Palmdale because I was living at Palmdale at the time. So we were smoking on the way down from Palmdale. And so, you know, there was definitely weed in the air. Yeah. Right. There was definitely weed in the air. And again, you know, they can't they can't just check us. They can't do nothing crazy. Right. So, you know, my boy was like, yeah, you know, like we smoked a little bit early. And I was like, God damn. I was like, dude, you didn't even have to say earlier. You could have said we smoked fucking yesterday in the stenches. You know, because yeah, 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 because it wasn't like an inebriated stop. It was just, it was just a seatbelt stop, right? So it could have been as easy as here's a ticket for your seatbelt, go around ahead. Yeah. And then uh, I remember because of that, they took my boy out. They saw him as Uh, I think the weaker one. Yeah, Uh, the weak link. Yeah. So then uh, they took him out, and they were talking to me. And then they came back and they were like, hey, what do you have in the trunk? And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't have anything. He's like, that's not what your boy said. Uh, and I was like, I don't have anything. Oh I was like, I don't have anything. I said, I don't have anything. And then by this time, I had lost all eye contact with my boy. By this time, he was like this and shit. Like, yeah. I'm I'm bad. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I already knew. I was like, oh, this yeah. motherfucker. Oh, I was like, oh, man, what did you do, right? Yeah. So they handcuff us and they put us in the back and this motherfucker's like, yo, um, I was like, hey, fool, like, what's cracking? She like, what happened? My G fucking folded like a pretzel, you know, like folded like a lawn chair, my G, you know? Oh, fuck. And uh, this was, you know, this was like, nah, hey, dog, we gonna say it's all, like, don't even trip, fool. Like, when we get in there, fool, it's it's, fool, it's ours. I was like, it is ours, motherfucker. Like, you you put in on this investment. What the fuck you mean? Like, all of a sudden, you want to be a ghost investor, motherfucker? Like, this ain't a fucking $400 million company. Like, we dope dealing out here, bro. You in this shit. Uh, I know you ain't no silent partner. Yeah, right? like you, they <laughs> no silent partner, motherfucker. Like we, yeah, we in this, right? Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is what we, yeah, this, this, we came out here, right? Yeah, together, you know, fifty fifty, you know. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, yeah, we good, we good, we good, right? And we get in there, and it wasn't even like ten minutes, bro. And uh, then I'm in the fish tank, and I'm just like trying to see who's coming <laughs> and shit. I was like, fuck, I'm just like this on the fucking windshield. Uh, and then I see my boy walk by, and he was like. Oh, Call you. Uh, what do you mean? Like, what? Me? what? And, I, and I'm looking at the cop, and the cops like, <laughs> the cops like, oh, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. What can I do? And he's like, this. I'm gonna call you, dog. And I was like, What the fuck you mean? Where? Me? Yeah. I'm in fucking jail. <laughs> what do you mean you're gonna call me, bitch? I don't have a number. I'm in jail, yeah, my dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you mean, call me? <laughs> like, I'll call your 911. So here goes another 40 minutes, and you gotta remember, this is like. 
my first time in jail, right? So yeah. I'm I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, so I'm in the fish. Tank. Hey, what's up, Pedro? You know, saying my name. You should try to be all cool. <laughs> and I go up to the phone, and um, there was like a certain way on how to use a phone. Yeah. Right? And there was only one call that they were going to let us do. So I remember I got up, and uh, I guess the dude before <laughs> me knew the trick on how to dial out, and I didn't know any of it. Yeah. So he was like, man, here, man, what pen did he tell you? Okay, okay. I right, typed that in. He's like, here, man, let me fix it, man. Let me call my boy, see oh. if it works. And he called his boy, and he used my call. Oh, oh damn. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and he he never said it, but his yeah. look was like, welcome yeah. to jail, puto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Supposed, use your calling hey, card. And right? I was like, you know? right there. And, yeah. I was like and I was like, all right. And I didn't know. Like, I didn't know. I was just like, I was like, he looked beatable. Yeah, <laughs> he looked beatable. He looked beatable, <laughs> but I was like, like I don't want to, uh, I just got here. I don't want to make a big commotion. Yeah, it's whatever, yeah. dog. I'm not tripping, right? Yeah, yeah. So I waited like another hour, and then by that time, I was like, I made the call myself, and you know, I remember he had left or whatever the fuck, you know? And uh, yeah, I, I made my call. And then, uh, if, in fact, I, I, I called my boy. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> oh, and I was, like, I was like, what the fuck, bro? What's going on? He's like, bro, I'm going to go to the pad, fool. We're going to get it all figured out. I was like, okay, cool. Go to the pad and figure it out, fool. Like, get me the fuck out of here, yeah. bro, right? At this point, I, I didn't know that he had rolled yet, yeah, you know? yeah. So then they call me, you know, like they call me, hey, get tears, come over here. And then they have me talk to the sergeant at the Hollywood division. He's like, man, this is all yours. And I was like, yeah. He's like, how old are you? He's like, I'm 22. So, That's a lot of dope for you to be saying at 22. Yeah. And I was like, they don't make it. I was like, man, you should have seen me last week. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> You should have seen me last <laughs> week, nothing, you know? And uh, he was like, all right, cool. So I remember he he he, he counted the money. He took the money. He, he he got the weed. He got he got the scale, the whole shit. And he put it in the Ziploc bag and he handed it out. And he was like, all right, cool, take him back. And then uh, I remember uh, I remember I called I called my pops. Well, I called the house, called the house, and, and my pops answered. Yeah. And I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, where are you at? I was like, oh shit, I'm over here at a girl's house. Yeah. He was like, oh, okay, like when are you gonna come home? I was like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. He was like, oh, okay. He's like, because I just seen, I just seen Oscar and shit. He's in his room just like with his legs kicked up watching movies. I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, so the dude that, in the back of my head, I'm like, damn, the dude that just ratted me out is, is at the house? crib <laughs> with his <laughs> feet kicked up watching a movie. <laughs> Your boy. I was like, that's sick as fuck. Like, not only is he a rat, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but he's a lazy rat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God damn. Oh, God. So. I, I, I told my dad, I was like, look, tell him that he has to leave and yeah. to never come back. And I haven't seen that dude in like 15 years. Uh, rightfully so. Oh, yeah. You know, again, I mean, hey, man, you know, it, it, it was maybe for the best of us. I mean, hopefully he got his shit together just like yeah. I did. And, and, and you know, I, I hold no, like, I don't animosity. hold, I don't hold no animosity, bro. We yeah. were kids. We were 22 years old. Like, yeah, right. we, we. We, we we wanted the money, we wanted the you know the fast life, yeah, and we yeah. were living it, but we weren't prepared for like what really came with it, for the it. consequences. Yeah. You know, I was I was all for it, you know, because it was I was always the life of the party. Yeah. So to me, it was just easy. To me, I was like, I'm making nine hundred a day. Like, oh, the yeah, are you kidding party. me? Like, I was yeah. I was good, right? Twenty two. I'm twenty two, making nine hundred a day. I'm driving around the Lincoln LS on Dubs, or? like. Nice. No, two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah, it's like two thousand seven oh, or something. You know. Man. So I'm doing all right. Like oh, I'm a twenty two year old kid. You know. Yeah. I got a little job just to kind of like, you know, play it off, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so that shit, like, you know, when that shit hit the fan, it was kind of like, okay, that shit is so, real. At, so you got bailed out, but you had a, like a team back then or something? There were yeah, I was uh, I was signed by Steve LaBelle at the time. He was, me, Nipsey Hussle were signed to him. Bone Thugs and Harmony was signed to them. And, and what were you signed to him for? Were you a singer? I was rapping. Oh, you were a rapper? Too? I was rapping at the time, yeah. What, yeah. What, was the, so, what was the rap name? Beretta. All right. Yeah, brother. So that's how I know a lot of these artists, like the Bashes and all oh, these guys. You know, you know, because that's I used to open up for these guys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, yeah, man. After that, it was like I'm done. I'm done. I mean, I'm, I'm I was done selling drugs. I kept doing music and all that. Yeah. So how long did you do uh, music for? I was doing it since I was like maybe 12. That's right. Were you any good? Yeah. All right. So how did, how did you merge from the well first the dope scene? Well, I know yeah. you merged out of that one because of fucking Oscar. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Oscar. <laughs> Don't hang around with Oscar people. Yeah. Whatever you do, do not hang around with Oscar. <laughs> so after you get after you get done in the dope scene, they bail you out. You do the the rap thing for a few years. You, well, the good thing was you met a bunch of people. Yeah. Right. So how did you go from that to you started also like doing films and and videotaping all this stuff, right? Uh, it wasn't until like I want to say like I was doing uh this is like two thousand eight two thousand nine right uh my 
my partner, he was like my hype man. He was like, you know, help me, like he was helping me produce my album. At the time, his dad, after I got uh, released from jail, and he was like, you know what, stop all that shit. We'll help you pay for your music career. We'll help you develop and we're like, we'll take care of you. Just stay off the dumb shit. And I, and I was doing that. Unfortunately, in 2008, I was still I was still heavily doing drugs. I was still partying. You know, I wasn't selling no more, but I was just having a good time, yeah. you know? So, and my partner, like my boy, um, he was, you know, he was doing his thing, you know? He was doing pills, unfortunately, you know? And it was in 2008, he passed away of an OD. Oh, man. And uh, that's when I left the music in, 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 like completely. At the time, I had a song on the radio. Uh, Power 106 had played, like, Power 106 had broke my record. Felly Fell had, you know, broke my record. Yeah. Nice. It was doing really good. I started, you know, doing little baby tours and started opening up for a lot more people. And then uh, it was at, it was like right at the time where it was like, if we keep going, we're going to be able to reach something. Right. Yeah. And he passed away and it was kind of like, I was done with music. I was, I was done with it. I was out of here. Now, was the guy who passed away, was he touring with you guys also? Yeah. And that also, that pretty much broke your spirit when it came to music. Yeah, it, it was, yeah. Cause it was it like, I tried to do shows after he passed away. Yeah, right. And because he was my hype yeah. man, I would stay on one side of the. The stage, stage and people would be like you got to move around and yeah. i wasn't noticing that you yeah, know yeah and it was just one of those things where like you just started seeing like i started seeing who was you know because before it was like hey man you're opening up for who oh man like, oh man and, and like the support was all there you know yeah. it was all there but as soon as shit hit the fan a little bit it was like the people that were calling me that wanted vip tickets to my show was like they weren't there no more yeah. So I started seeing like the ugly side of the industry and how people act. And obviously the ugly side of the industry was also like the drugs. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? At that time, you know, and it's still now. I mean, how many rappers, how many young rappers oh, yeah, have died right now because them. of that shit, you know? Yeah. So, you know, he was, you know, I mean, it was, it was tragic the way he passed away. It, 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 it fucked me up emotionally it, to the point where I didn't want to do music and I stopped doing music completely because of that. Yeah. Have you thought about going back to music? Yeah, every day. Every day. Every, every day, day, but like. You know, to me, I'm not that guy. You know, like when you rap, there's a certain persona you have to carry yourself in and you have to be, you know, uh, and, and rough and tough and whatever other cases, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's plenty of guys out there that fill that role. And I don't think I need to do anything to prove myself or to prove that I can rap and be a certain way. Around when I wasn't rapping, I was joking with my family. I was the funny guy that you guys see now. Yeah. Right. And that's who I really am. And when I started understanding that, okay, cool, like I can actually make a career out of me being funny, then I started doing that, which is two years ago, you know? Okay. So I kind of uh, found out that that was my calling. Yeah. You know, I feel, you know, like music is my passion. I love it, but it's not my calling. Now, my were, my calling is making people laugh. When you were Beretta, so it was a gangster persona? Yeah, I mean, it was a street persona for sure. I wasn't, I wasn't tied into any gangs, but it was like, yeah. I mean, I had, you know, I was carrying a weapon. My boys were carrying guns, and it was just like, what's cracking? It, it wasn't nothing gang related. It was just more like, we doing hood music. We're gonna have to act a certain way. I mean, yeah. Do you see that now? And especially back then, it's like one's a perfect example is Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur was not that gangster when he first started. He kind of became a gangster within the two or three years that he was out out here after Suge Knight got him, and it seemed like. After rapping about it so much, he started believing that lifestyle. Have you seen anybody that really goes through that? They, they become a rapper, and all of a sudden, you see him five years later. Damn, this guy became what he's been rapping about. Yeah, I mean, I think at one point, you know, you lie to yourself so much, you start believing your own lies, and you believe your own hype. You know, if you don't have the right people around you that are going to guide you through shit and be like, dog, it's, this, this ain't it, you know? Yeah. And obviously, there's some people that are in that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. And that's what they do. And, hey, dog, be you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. If that's who you are, then be you. Well, but be you I, and but, save some money for an attorney. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't keep not being myself. That's right. So I decided to leave the music industry in completely. And if I ever did go back, I'd just probably rap to the ladies because that's more what I'm about is just being cool and smooth. And So what, what year yeah. or how old were you when you left the industry? I was like about 23. 24. Oh, shit. Okay. So it was not too far after you got off that case. Nah. All right, so then what did you do for it was like the culmination like it was sh like shit another. was happening so fast right i'm yeah. on the radio bro I'm, I'm i'm 20 years old this is what i dreamed of at this time radio was like oh yeah you on the radio yeah oh you oh yeah like you're, you're on yeah right? like, viral yeah so yeah, like in viral. a sense you know what i'm saying so i'm in the biggest market in the country you know you know la is one of the biggest markets in the country next to new york and my shit's on the radio yep 
And then I have another record that comes out, is, and now that one's doing 35 sessions across the country. Shit's happening. I'm I'm living it. I'm feeling yeah, good. I'm Bobby. 22 years old. You can't tell me nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. That's hey, Chris, right. you're fucking up. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> you, you yeah. are. Yeah. My yeah. situation's working. Don't tell yeah. me that I can't do, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I wasn't able to tell my homeboy stop doing drugs because I was doing the same thing. Yeah. I had, I had, I had, I had no ground to stand on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So so when you so when your boy dies of that shit and you see it yeah so I and you see and and you yeah. see that and, and and then you go to the hospital and you witness his mom and his dad crying on top of him Jesus, yeah. it just changes your life bro you know no no matter what and I'm it was it was a blessing it was a blessing and a curse you know yeah, what I'm saying in yes. a way but but I learned from it and 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 when we move on you know what I'm saying we yeah, moved yeah. on from it well, you know the, the great part about it not the the horrible part was your boy passing away. The great yeah. part about it was that his life didn't go in vain because that really shook you and kind of seems like yeah, no, nah, his um his life changed a lot of people's lives around around but that were around at the time. Yeah, you know him losing his life to drugs changed the way I move, the way our boys moved, the way guys that were around us and you they were kind of like yo if it could take somebody like that because my boy was he would walk into a room and he'd be able to talk to anybody. Yeah. He would, you know, if, if Jay-Z was here, he'd be able to talk to Jay-Z and be like, yo, hey, so we having lunch next week? I got you. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He had the charisma. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I was just more the talent, but yeah. he was the face of it. Yeah. I was just rapping and people liked the way I rap and that's how I, you know, I got my notoriety, but he was the one that was able to go up to people and make deals happen and, and just, and just, you know, he just had the gift of gaff. You was know what I'm saying? Pumping you up before the before the concert. Oh yeah, no, he was a man. He's my hype man. Yeah, yeah but I mean, is he telling you to do this, do this, do this? Oh yeah, oh yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, it was it was good. So that was 2008, and then I left that, and I started doing um, I started doing like podcasting. Mm -hmm. I was on latalklive.com for like about a year, and this is when like internet. It wasn't called podcasting. It was called internet radio. Okay. Right, because there was no really like. There was yeah. no terminology yeah, yet. Yeah, right, right. So it was more like internet radio. And at the time we had like two thousand like two hundred and seventy thousand followers Shit, or, or yeah. listeners any any time we went on. And then so that caught the attention of E Dub and Cooley. Shout out to Silent Giant Entertainment. So E Dub and Cooley, they had their own radio uh show on Power 106 called Pocos Pero Locos. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, and that was huge for the community here, huge mm -hmm. all over like the Southwest region and uh, like up into like, you know, Oklahoma. Like they were just huge. Like they had one of the biggest radio shows that was moving the culture forward. Yeah. So when they called us over there, like, hey, we would love to put your show on the network. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I don't come from radio. Yeah. I have no education in it, but we're doing numbers. Yeah. Right. So, so we're doing that. And then I started acting and then I started getting more parts in acting and commercials and movies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then I was like, you know what, man, I'm, I was talking to my, I was like, man, I, I, I kind of like this, kind of like this acting shit. Like, I don't know if I want to be on the mic for the rest of my life. Like, yeah. I, 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 I kind of want to move on and do other stuff, you know? So we kind of took a break from the show at a at a really good time. If we would have stayed on, man, who knows where we would have been now. But um, I ended up starting to uh, do um, uh, music videos, and I was working at this place because I, I always had like after I left the music industry and I wasn't selling drugs, and now I had to work for my shit. <laughs> You're like damn. And when I used to be like, how, how, how much are you paying me? Yeah. Twelve fucking dollars. <laughs> right. What? <laughs> for how long? Right. I gotta be here eight? Uh, 40 yeah. hours a week? Uh -huh. right. Wait, you take how much at the end of this shit? Taxes, baby. Yeah, taxes. And that's when yeah. I was like, oh, this is the real world. So I'm coming home with like 400 a week. And yeah. I'm like, oh, man, what the fuck? You know? So I remember I had, I was, I was working accounting. I somehow, I somehow conned my way into getting an accounting job. <laughs> I just, just bad, just major lies on that fucking, <laughs> on that application, dog. <laughs> I get it worked, huh? Because it was one of those, like, it was one of those, like, um, like agencies. Yeah. And they're like, so what do you know how to do? And they were like, whatever you know how to do, just go ahead and click uh, the tabs. And yeah, I was like, yeah. click, 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 accounting, click, click. marketing, fucking, yeah, you know, like, CEO, SEO, yeah. I could do all of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and a, there was a really low level bottom accounting position. And all I was doing is just taking, uh, uh, I was taking invoices yeah. and I was basically adding up all the, two, three, four cents that were left over on accounts. Okay. So then I would have, I was the guy that was calling you for five cents oh, that you owed us. Really? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and, uh, on the phone call. Oh, <laughs> dude, people were like, are you fucking calling me for a nickel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, 
<laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, there's. Yeah, can you pay up? Yeah, you owe it up. I mean, yeah. I don't want to. Uh, yeah. The last thing I want to last thing I want to do is take you to collections. It's yeah. gonna cost me more money than it's yeah. gonna cost you just yeah. to pay me. Yeah. They're like, I want to fucking mail it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Well, sir, if you do that, the postage is gonna cost a lot more because you're all the way in Denver. Yeah. So how the fuck do you want me to give you these this nickel? Like, dude, just if you could just give me your credit card. You want me to put it on my credit? <laughs> I was like, that's probably the fastest way to get this payment oh, in, you know? Shit. Like, oh, so that was shit. me, dude. And I hated, yeah, yeah. I hated my fucking job. And my boss knew it. Damn. My boss knew it, and he was like, "Hey, dude, you know what, man? We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to let you go." Yeah. You're you're you're, you're not bringing a collective <laughs> vibe here. We need <laughs> we need people to collect. The morale's going down. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, because like I would walk in and it'd be like, it, there was like a sign, and I think it read like. Uh, uh, click, <laughs> call, collect. It was like, oh, yeah, like fuck. click, call, collect, and that, that was like the motto. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, and I was just, and it was like me and two other people. And I just, we just looked at each other and more like, this you, is it, huh? You fucked up. You know what you should have done, Conky? You should have got 10 bucks, walked in for the week as a year. I clicked yeah. all the fucking money. Yeah, right. Dude, yeah. I mean, do you know how many times right. I thought about that? Yeah. But I was like, fuck that. Yeah. I already taken like 30% <laughs> off my check. Uh, you know? So what'd you do after that? So I got so I got fired. And uh, they <laughs> so, so they gave me my last check. It was $800. I went home. And I was telling my girlfriend at the time, wife now. I was like telling her, I was like, hey, so um, there's good news and bad news. She was like, what happened? I was like, I got fired. She's like... Okay, well, yeah, that's bad news. Yeah. What's the good news? I was like, I'm gonna start shooting music videos. Yeah. She's like, bro, that's like both bad news, bro. Like, how the fuck? <laughs> oh, how are you gonna make a living? I was like, no, look, yeah. you know how we were doing radio, so I know all these rappers. Yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna just start calling them and see if they need music videos, and I'll charge them a hundred bucks. So if, I was like, babe, if I do five of those a week, yeah. five hundred bucks. If I, that's you know, two thousand dollars a month. In two thousand nine, that was still kind of decent to make, yeah. whatever you know. Like you right. could, you could still probably get a small apartment, and eat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she was like. Oh my God! Dude, you're gonna take this eight hundred dollar check and just fucking Blow burn it. Oh, that was the investment money. That was, that was, that was the seed money. So, so I took those eight hundred dollars and we went right. straight to Curacao. <laughs> oh fuck! Twenty seven percent APR. Yeah, because oh, you, know, you gotta think about it. I was paying for everything cash, so I had no credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody goes to Curacao, right? Uh. So I remember I went to Curacao and they were like, "Well, you got to put like four hundred down," and I was like, "And then what?" They're like, "Well, the rest is in payments." I was like. Cool. We okay, so we keep four hundred. They're yeah. like, yeah, you're good. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. So I remember I got the camera, and then that camera just changed my life. Really? That camera from there it was just I started shooting music videos and small documentaries and little like I, I, I remember I would go to like car dealerships like Joe's Auto Sales, and I'd be like, hey, bro, do you mind if I do something and like a little commercial for you and like you could put it on YouTube? Yeah. They were like YouTube. I was like, yeah, it's like people watching YouTube right now. This is like when YouTube was barely coming out. Right. It was barely a thing. It's like yeah. people were posting, but it wasn't like how it yeah. is now, you no, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and people were like, cool. I was like, look, it's the next wave. Like YouTube's going to be big. And then you could post this video like on your Facebook and stuff like that. And they were like, all right, cool. How much? I was like, well, how much do you think? They were like, 200. I was like, sold. <laughs> Like so, so then I started. So then I would I would go to like each dealership and yeah. ev on every block, you know. And then I started I, I started getting a, I started getting yeah. accounts, yeah. yeah. You know, so I started getting accounts, and next thing you know, I had like you know eight hundred dollars coming in a week, because so I would have like six different six like ten different dealerships, and yeah. I would go and do their pictures or whatever the case, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then it went into full on music videos after that. Once I learned how to use my camera and people trusted me, because I did fucked up videos in the beginning, right? <laughs> You're doing low budget porn. Oh, dude, not nah, you know. Oh, it was yeah, it was really bad because I had no education in yeah, it, you know. Yeah. So like, everything that I learned was all trial and error, bro. Yeah, yeah. No school. Try, no, it was all it was all trial and error. I did I did briefly go to school and I and, and and I'll explain how it happened. So I started doing music videos, right? And I got my first big music video. It was my first big budget, and it was um a guy by the name of Black Chill. So back in the '90s, he had a song called um, "It's Like Romeo and Juliet." Oh, yeah, yeah, Hot yeah, sex yeah, okay. Remember that guy? Yeah. Fuck yeah. So they tell me they're like, "Yo, this is that guy," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking there." <laughs> I'm in. So like, all right, cool. Um, they were like, uh, "Do you want to meet us?" And I was like, "Yeah." Like, like, what do you guys want to meet? I was thinking like at the house, Starbucks. Are like, meet us at you know, meet us at TGI Fridays. And I was like, "Oh, y'all want to go eat and shit?" Uh. I was like, I had, I had never been to TGI Fridays before. <laughs> I was like, cool. I was like, I'm probably, I'm more than likely, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the steak. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I'm saying, even, even if I don't get the 
gig, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get some eat. steak. Oh, you good. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So in my head, I'm, I'm always eating, bro. In my head, I'm always eating. So I was already thinking, I was like, hell yeah. I was like, it's Friday. I looked at the specials. Like, Ooh, steak and shrimp day? Hell yeah. So I pull up, and, and we're talking, and the dude's like, yo, man, I've seen your work, bro. Like, I, I, I really like what you're doing. And um, I heard you're, like, really affordable. And I was like, oh, fuck, right? He was like, so this is what I'm going to do, man. I'm going to give you $10,000 to make my video happen. Oh, yeah. And I remember... Uh. I remember uh, his boy was with him, his, his 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 boy Anthony. He was like his producer helping him put the shit together. Not yeah. the money, man, but just kind of helping them together. And he, uh, my boy Anthony is still currently, he's a cinematographer instructor at the New York Film Academy right mm -hmm. here in Burbank. Okay. So uh, anyways, I get the gig. I'm like $10,000 richer, right? I, I, I didn't know how, the, how, the, how it worked, right? So the next day he calls me. He's like, hey, bro, like, um, so you're going to need like an assistant. You're going to need this, that, like a crew. And he started naming all these positions. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, good. He's like, all right, come and send you the budget. And, you know, if you want, just <laughs> send me the, you know, um, send me the check so I can start paying everybody and start renting all the gear that we're going to need. I said, yeah. cool. He's like, all right. So he hits me. He's like, man, it's going to be like $6,400. And I was like, uh, man, dude, that's like 60% of the budget I just got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm like, fuck, now I'm $3,300 richer, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> And um, so we get to the shoot, and we this again. This is my first big shoot. I don't know exactly. I don't know what's going on. The cameras they rented, never seen them in my life. Oh, oh, shit. But I knew what I wanted, right? So I wrote this treatment down, and we got these locations. It was called DC DC Studios and Sets in downtown, and it's like the real movie sets, right? All right, it's like a big old warehouse with nothing but huge sets used in movies and all that. Yeah. And uh, I, I get there at six in the morning, and they're like, "All right, cool. The director's here." And I'm just like looking around and he's like, my right, crew's so he's like, dude, the, the crew's waiting for you to yeah. let them know what you want to do. And I was like, well, let's, let's shoot a music video. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're here to do. You know? And the dude's like, yeah, but um, so what do you want? Like, do you want uh, like a, a 650 Ari kit here? Oh, do you shit. want a little bit of bounce here? Uh, do you want some reflectors? Can uh, we put yeah. like maybe a 5K? And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 just see what it looks like. Let's yeah. bring this bitch. And the whole time, right? They're like, "Hey, boss, what do you think? Uh, is this cool? Like with a little flood right here?" I was like, eh, "A little bit less flood, we're good to go." <laughs> it's just fucking lying my way oh, through the whole shit, fuck, right? But yeah. I'm looking at the monitor and yeah. I know what I want. And yeah, I was yeah. like, "Okay, cool. This is how this is how I want the music video to look." <laughs> so like, and at the end of the day, um, Anthony was like, "Man, um, it was kind of tough today, but we got it done, huh?" And I was like, "Yeah, man. I'm sorry, dude." He was like. Hey, just curious, you know, this guy's, um, you know, big white dude, about 6'4". Yeah. He's from Cincinnati, really good heart. Comes up to me, and he's like, look, bro, um, I noticed that you don't, like, you never went to film school, huh? And I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah. I was like, nah. He's like, that's cool. He's like, look, man, this is what I'm going to do for you. He said, I'm a, I'm a cinematography instructor at the New York Film Academy. He's all like, I'm going to get you a job as a TA. And you're going to learn everything you need to learn. Yeah. You know what you want, but you don't know how to communicate it. The moment you know how to communicate it, bro, you're going to become a beast. Yeah. And then, so here goes this, this white dude that believed in this little Chicano kid. Yeah. And, and got me a job at the New York Film Academy. And I became, like, you know, a TA to guys like, you know, um, Armstrong. He shot all the, all the Saw movies. And then after that, after he left to do, to do work on, on movies, I ended up, getting paired up with Anthony B. Richmond. Mm -hmm. Nobody kind of wanted to be with him. He was an older gentleman from British, you know, from, uh, he, was, he was British, he's like about 70, I, I think he's, I believe he's still alive now. But he shot like the Sandlot, Men of Honor, just huge oh, movies, shit. right? Damn. So I started out just getting him his coffee because he was one of those guys, like just yeah. stay out of his way. Yeah. You know, just stay out of his way, just get his coffee. And that's how I started. I started just getting his coffee, his little cafecito, his little panecito. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. And then uh, I, so I, I, I I gave him his coffee, and then it just started from like, yo, man, come sit next to me. Hey, man, give me my backpack. Hey, man, hey, so what do you think we should do here? And, you know, like, what do you think we should teach today? And I'm like, oh, you know, I really like this. I like this scene from this movie. You know, he's like, okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to teach you guys how to shoot that today. Yeah. And it went from his coffee down to, like, him telling me how he shot fucking, you know, Man of Honor. Yeah. Oh, wow. And telling me yeah. stories about how he used to party and shoot music videos for the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and yeah. how they... The women and the drugs and you know he started really right. confiding in me you yeah. know what i'm saying and uh yeah man i i, I learned the game from him you know i, oh, I yeah. here's this kid from san fernando i thought 
Growing up, I thought Hollywood was thousands of miles away. Yeah. I never knew that I'd only lived 10 miles away from where it all happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but here I am 10, you know, 10, 12 years later on the back lot of Universal Studios um, teaching foreigners how to how to shoot. What's up? Bro? You know what I'm saying? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> and I spent, I spent three years there getting paid to learn. I, I, I got an education. Yeah. That's all I was doing. I was just minding my own business and just listening. I'm like, okay, that's how you do it. Okay, cool. And then in the meantime, I was doing my own gigs. So whatever I was learning, I was yeah, using it. I was else. using it right outside. I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go shoot a music video today. I was using it, yeah. and it just sharpened up my. It just sharpened me up so good. Hey, how did that ten thousand dollar music video come out? It came out it, dope. Really? It came out really dope. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a movie. It looks like a movie. That's right, brother. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So then, how long are, have you been doing? You've been doing it for what now? The the actual. I think filming has been filming. I've, I'm on my eleventh, twelfth year almost. Okay. Yeah. Since two thousand and ten. And that's how we met, which was cool because yeah. he was filming the video, right? Yeah. How did you, tr how did you, 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 I mean, your thing is you've been molded from, you went to the Cholo thing, you went to the drug dealer thing, yeah. you went to the party scene, the, the party scene. Well, the party scene went for a while for you. It, that was, a, that was ever <laughs> since I knew like there was girls in parties. Yeah. And, about and, 12. And, and then you, you go from the rap scene and now you're doing the filming. How the hell does all that come out too? Concrete who we have now. That's exactly what it is. It's it's a culmination of everything I've learned. When I started doing, when I started doing the skits. Hold, hold on a second, yeah. Chris. You'll see Concrete live on the left hand side. Yeah. Show some of these skits for some of these people who don't know who this gentleman is, real quick. <laughs> ¿Qué pasó, mi raza? Es boy, el Cubby, el arcillo from California, selling my malonas over here. Apuntale, güey, apuntale, güey, apuntale, güey. Check this out, fool. We're giving hey. out sick ass prices, hey, fool. Hey, who are you and what are you doing on my truck? I'm El Cubby, I'll see you, fool, and I am the boss, fool, because my primo Concrete said I can be the boss. Wait, fool. you're the boss? Concrete I'm the said boss, that? Fool. Concrete told you you're the boss. Yes, who are you? I, I'm the boss. This Ch is my store. Chale, fool, I'm El Cubby, I'll see you. He told me some fool would come up. You know what, fool? Check this out, my G. You're not a uniform, fool. Get a uniform, get a uniform, fool. Let's go sell, 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 sell. Cut! Nicole. Hi, are you offended by someone's post? Is someone shining so hard that you just can't stand it and it hurts your core? Well, don't worry. Go ahead and call 1 800 I am offended. Hey, We're Chris, gonna get Chris, Chris! Somebody's like in hatery. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go patch someone up. We gotta get them hating back in no time. All right? Call us 1 800 I am offended. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, El Cavilancillo from California, and I'm shooting my music video. I love my Malonas. Go! Hey! First verse. Hey! Let's you again, what are you doing? Uh, God, we're shooting a music video, God. Well, who gave you permission to do that? Concrete. You got the whole team out here right in the middle of the work day. All the girls out of Human Resources. Joey, David, what are you guys doing? They're part of the production crew, God. You have got to clean this up and wrap it up and get out of here. You're done. Nicole, you of all people, I can't believe you. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. Bajale, bajale. I'm, I'm fine, ladies. All right, let's go. That's, I know, I know, I know, I know. Group hug, group hug, group hug, group hug. All right, all right, all right. You getting me all wrinkled? Go. Dale, vámonos. Ah, okay, tacochita, ya está. I'm taking you to Target later. I need. All right, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Let's get out of here. Hurry up and tell them I don't have all night. Hey, demon. I need my suit back, fool. I know you stole it. What are you talking about, man? What suit? The red one right there, fool. You stole my suit. Man, that's we traded for that, man. I would never trade my Maruchan, fool. You crazy? That's my soup. I need nah, my soup. Nah, man, we traded for that, man. Nah, hey, man, I ate. I, 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 let you me traded for me. Let me see the soup. Look, man, this 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 ain't this ain't yours, bro. Look at it. Read, read. Let I have my initials on. Hey, let man, what's up, bro? That's my, That's my last soup, bro. We never traded. Oh, bro, like that? We never traded. Like that? We never traded. Okay, fool. okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Where the fuck do you come up with shit like that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you know, I've been joking around like this since I was a child. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, my yeah. cousin. Would, I mean, he, you know, me and him been like, you know, me and him been tooth and nail, bro, since That's we were right. kids. Yeah. You know, so he he knows that this is, it's not a fluke. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like I just woke up today and I was like, hey, I want to do comedy. <laughs> you right. know, it was like I've always been like that, and now it was it was a you know it was it was during a dark time. The reason why I decided to do comedy, mm -hmm. I was doing really bad. You know, so it was kind of like a way for me to be like, you know what, dude, kind of stick a, you know, stick a middle finger to everybody and be like, I'm just, I'm just do me now. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, and yeah. I started doing comedy, and then took off. Huh? Next thing you know, like, uh, doing all right. <laughs> and that, was there anybody in particular that tried to push you to do the comedy? Um, yeah, uh, it was about ten to twelve thieves that jacked <laughs> all my gear 
in 2018, August 23rd, <laughs> yeah. around 11 p.m. at night. I was shooting a music video for Sekan, arguably one of the biggest rappers in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And I was shooting a music, it was him featuring uh, Compton Menace. And it was the last shot of the night. We were on our way to, uh, we were shooting the scene at, uh, at Miracle Mile, right there off of Fairfax, yeah. right where right like Biggie passed away. Yeah, yeah. So we park our car, and it's kind of like a touristy spot. So what happens is that tourists usually park on that block, and then they go around the corner, and they get their pictures, and they, and they come back. So that's exactly what we thought we were going to do. We're like, we're going to park our cars here. We'll be back in 10, 10, 15 minutes, tops, and we're out of here. Well, by the time they came back, uh, the truck was basically fucking hijacked. Uh, they took the whole truck? or No, nah, they just they took, took everything. In. Yeah, they broke in, took everything inside it. I had about $40,000 worth of gear in there. Uh, and I basically kept my camera in one lens, mm -hmm. and then not in, you know, but it was a, I had tons of other shit, though, like worth like 40,000. Yeah, bars. You know, so I was, it was one of those things where I was like, man, I, went, I remember I cried for like four days. <laughs> <laughs> you closed the blinds? I'm dead serious, bro. I am dead I serious, it, bro. bro. I believe it. You know, because this is like, like a breakup. I, this, no, like, this, this, this is no this Well, is you somebody. know, because this wasn't yeah. made off of drug money. Yeah, yeah. it was hard earned money. It was hard earned money, yeah. and that's what hurt. Let know. Yeah. That's what hurt. It was like this was like blood, sweat, and tears. Yes, yeah, sir. Like sacrifice, wow. you know, type 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 stuff. You know, sacrifice like to the point where it's like, I would move back to my parents' house just so I could raise more money to buy more gear. Yeah. Right. And here I am, a married man, back in my, you know, what I'm saying, just to kind of live, keep living the dream. Yeah. So you know, like those are the kind of things that you look at and you're like, fuck. I didn't, and I didn't want to go. I was like, man, I don't want to have to do all this shit over again. You know, and the people that used to call me for videos, I remember I posted, <clears throat> and this is really why, right? I posted a video. It was the most, uh, <clears throat> it was the most transparent video I had ever posted of myself, ever. I had, you know, I, 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 I was blessed. I traveled the world doing this, man. Yeah. You know, I, Puerto Rico, Europe, South America, nice. filming. I, I lived it, it was fun. It was, I saw the world through my lens, bro. Yeah. Um, so I was, I used to post all these pictures. Like, oh, I'm over here, fucking Mona Lisa in the background. Like nobody gave a fuck, right? <laughs> so I remember I posted this video and it was, I, I was literally like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, man, y'all stole my shit, man. <laughs> Just bring and it back. I was man. asking people to rat. I was like, if anybody, <laughs> if anybody knows anything, <laughs> I swear to God, man, just call the anonymous line, bro. I won't say shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> and, I got, the and I got no uh, hits. Nobody uh, called me. Uh, you know, I think one dude called me, but I think he was trying to get more like, uh, I think he was trying to get more like info on like, okay, so he does a camera. Maybe he's like, I'll find more, it. Yeah, I'll find yeah, it and yeah, keep yeah. the shit. You know what I'm saying? Snitch. He was trying to get, yeah, he was trying to get more just info, you know? Uh, and um, yeah, dude. And then, yeah, next thing you know, um, so I, I do that video and then maybe like 30 days later after all this crying, uh, I was I was at this I was at this office that uh, Edo and Kule used to let me like work out of. Yeah, and I'm sitting there just watching YouTube videos because I ain't got no work. Nobody's calling me for music videos. I can't shoot. You know, you and I'm told everybody you got your shit stolen. Yeah, dude. And I was like, and I just told her I got my shit stolen. I could have not said anything and just rented quit rented yeah. the gear. You know, so nobody's calling me, and I'm sitting there watching music, uh, watching like videos, and I'm watching funny funny YouTube videos. And uh, this video pops up of this little girl's birthday party and her hair catches on fire because they start like throwing like the little uh, confetti the, spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the confetti spray. So then her hair catches on fire. Uh -huh. Where I kind of placed myself in that video. I'm like that Theo that pulls up with the 12 pack and <laughs> shit. And I start spraying her too. And that's when she catches on fire. And I remember like I posted that video. And this is, I had like, a, I had a few thousand, maybe 3,000 followers or whatever. Yeah. And I remember I got like, 13 comments and I was like, oh shit. I'm blowing up, I'm blowing up. I was like, cause I only had like five, maybe six. Yeah. And it was all like cousins, you know, like aunts <laughs> and Theo supporting the cause, you know? Yeah, it was that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was just like friends. Yeah. Friends that <laughs> care. <laughs> friends that care about your feelings. You know? <laughs> it's like so oh, I so God. to see 13 comments, I was like, yeah. okay, cool, we're getting somewhere. Oh, right. And then I remember it was like 20 comments, and then I did another one. The next skit, the next skit that I did um, was, it was a lady that was getting caught stealing at, at a liquor store. And I was at the studio again, and right across the street from us, there was like a 76, and I was like, man, that liquor store? Because of me filming, and all the years oh, that I okay. didn't filming, yeah. I knew the time of the day that video was shot, mm -hmm. 
I knew what color lighting they had, whether it was tungsten or 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 uh, uh, t- you know tungsten or daylight. Yeah. So I knew that I had to get certain locations that fit those videos, and because of my you know experience in shooting, I was able to duplicate and cheat the shots to where it seemed like I was in those places. Okay. So people always like, how are you always in these crazy situations? <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then I was like, I just always am in the right time, right yeah, place. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, the first one I saw of you, and it was uh, oh my cuñado, Sharky. He told me, hey, you gotta check out this guy. And I barely, I barely got on Instagram. Yeah, it was that one fool that his homie saying, get him, get him. He's getting socked up. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, the cholo getting jumped. The cholo getting jumped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was like one of the last. Um, it was funny because I haven't done a lot of those lately, and those are the ones that kind of like got me known in a way, right? right? Yeah. In the beginning, those are the ones that people really love, like the reaction videos, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but that was one of the last reaction videos that I did. I think it was last year. So how, now, you, now you're now you doing, you're actually going and doing a stand-up comedy, right? I'm taking a stab at it. All right. I, I'm, I'm doing more like my characters on stage. Well, that's comedy. Yeah, my plan is to do like a stage play where it's like I just, instead of coming to see stand-up, you come and see just a comedy play. Yeah. You know, where I can bring all my characters out, the Rebels, Stevie B, Los Fukis, um, you know, uh, M- Macho Man, What's like it? all these what, characters. Oh, Macho Man, this fucking guy, Dwight. You know, so all these, <laughs> El, El Cavilancillo. What's the Indian called? Uh, Tepic. Uh, Tepic. I'm yeah. Like, uh, Tepic gangster. Yeah. Have, that's the feds. <laughs> have you ever got any backlash from any of your guys that you do in skit or plays? No. No, no backlash yet. No, I stay away from the ones that will give me backlash. <laughs> well, because, it, you know, it's funny. Like, I, 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 in fact, I just talked about this on another uh, interview that I had. And they asked me, like, yo, has there been any skits that you were about to do that you didn't end up doing for certain reasons? And I was like, yeah. You know, in the Latino culture, especially in Mexican culture, there's, there's a character by the name of Cepillin. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And Cepillin is, is basically he... He's, he's, he's a clown. He sings music for kids. Um, and me and my cousin had this debate for like about 40 minutes on whether we should do it or not. Yeah. And the reason I didn't do it is because Seppi Yin, he, he paints his face black with a white mouth and puts on a red nose. Yeah. And he, he dances and does, yeah. all, does all this stuff. And, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of the social situations that are going on in our country today. Mm-hmm. And I'm aware of how that could have affected my career because I just don't have Mexicans that or Latinos or Chicanos that follow me. I have people in the white community, yeah, people in the black community that follow me, people in the Asian community. And I will guarantee you that a lot of those people would not know who this character that I am portraying okay. is. Yeah. And I couldn't leave that up for debate because they're not going to look and be like, hmm, I wonder if Concrete was trying to do something funny. They're going to be like, yo, that is racist, my dude. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm, 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 you know, I'm conscious about what's going on. I thought, and I decided I, not to do it. I thought, it, I thought you were gonna say it because he just passed away. I never even. But then again, I'm not an African American. Yeah. I, I didn't even think because of the black face, face and all yeah. that. I just. Yeah, you know, and, and and again, you know, maybe, I guarantee you, with 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 my community, they would have been like, hell, hell yeah, yeah, because yeah. you you resemble him, the hair, you put on the hat, you dance yeah. around and act like a fool, right? We well, whatever, the, right? Because that's what he does, right? Yeah. But. When you look at the history in this country and blackface entertainment, mm-hmm. um, I basically would have just, I would have ended my career before it even started. Right. And I wouldn't have meant it like that. But in this culture right now, they yeah. don't ask questions, bro. Yeah. The cancel you, player. It's just the cancel from day to tomorrow. And dude, I mean, I have love for the black community, bro. Yeah. Like it has, yeah. it has, it, w- it would have had nothing to do with that. But because I, I do surround myself with, you know, conscious people, I, I decided I was like, this is not going to be the right skit to do. Yeah. Have you have you had any conversations with comedians who've been in the game for a long time and now they see how it's that much more of a cancel culture? Because back in the days, that was what comedy was about. You can sit there and cross the lines. You can sit there and do all kind of crazy stuff. Not quite blackface, but you can do all kind of stuff. But it seems now like a lot of comedians are kind of kind of holding, holding back. back. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I don't. I don't hold back. You know, I, I feel like I, I do what I, you know. Um, it was so funny because when I did Andre 3000. <laughs> yeah, I seen that. You know, <laughs> that was awesome. you know I, did, I did Andre 3000. And I remember there was a few comments from a couple of my black fathers that were like, I love it. See, he didn't have to do blackface. Yeah. That's right. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So it's it like, you back to- yeah, and I, you know, I was able to make fun of a, 
of a black artist. Hey, wait, pero estás moreno, güey. Yeah, and it's, yeah, <laughs> and it's, and it's, you know, like, like I made fun of Chris, uh, what was it, uh, uh, the basketball player? Um, Chris Paul? No. Paul Pierce, Paul because Paul people say I look like Paul Pierce at times, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. So then I made, I, I made fun of Paul Pierce. <laughs> right? So I made fun of Paul Pierce, right? You got to follow him, Chris. And it's yeah. just, and it's just characters that <laughs> I just create, but it's no malintent. Like, it's not, be, like, I'm not trying to make fun of them or, 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 or do something that's out of pocket. Like, well, I know what's out of pocket, but yeah. I know what's also funny within the black community because I, I have black friends and I've communicated with them and I've been around it and I've been around the culture as well that I know what could potentially be damaging yeah. or be disrespectful. And I try to, you know, I can't make everybody laugh, but I try to make comedy for everybody, mm -hmm. right. you know? What's the funnest character you like to play? Honestly, the funnest character, and not even really the character, the funnest skits I like to do on my dad. Oh, but that was the question I was gonna ask. What does your dad think about you doing all this? He loves it. I'm finally making money for something that I love doing. <laughs> Because I see you busting his chops all the time. Well, yeah, because, you know, like, I come from a culture is like, you know, man, do you marry, dude? Get a job. Get yeah. that 401k. Right, like, stop this shit. Yeah, like, you, five, you got kids now, yeah. bro. Like, stop. Mm -hmm. Stop. Do, do do the right thing. Get your family of insurance the right. Food. You know? And I'm just like, no, dad. I'm going to rap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a fucking rapper, you know? Oh, I am going to be the greatest actor. And, and now that he sees the comedy bubbling and, you know, they're paying me for appearances and they're paying me for brand deals. And, you know, I pull up in a Chevy and he's like, what's this? And I was like, they gave it to me. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Really? Because of the comedy? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah he's like, oh, all right, good. And, 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 and I'm starting to see us. I mean, I, I can't say my dad's never been proud of me, but I can see my dad is, is, is kind of seeing me coming to myself. And he sees that I'm starting to accomplish some of the stuff that I've always wanted to do. And, 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 and again, I mean, it's all to them. You know, my dad came out here with my mom in 1982, crossed the border. My mom was pregnant. And, you know, the sacrifices they made, I'm just trying to make the best of it. That's yeah. right, brother. And you definitely yeah. are. So how's how's this journey been with, uh, I see your dad with your wife, Matt, because she has she always supported you? You thought you are crazy? <clears throat> have you guys gone to fights? No, you got to go to get a real job, Chris. Nah, my mom, uh, my wife has actually always been supportive. That's right. Yeah. My wife comes from the entertainment industry. You know, she used to sing little selena at venice beach and her side wow. acts were you know her side acts were michael clark duncan and danny trejo <laughs> those were those were her side acts and she yeah. was bringing in three like two or three hundred bucks a day she was paying for her rent for her family's rent oh, shit. she was young she was yeah. traveling she did she toured before i even thought of being in music she, was she our, supports you. so you know when she was leaving the music that's when i decided to really get into it and be in entertainment but it's not yeah. she's always supported if anything you know she, yeah dude i mean when i traveled been gone for 10 days and been in places that most wives probably would have been like fuck that <laughs> she was always like don't make your money don't fuck it up yeah that's right don't fuck it up you know yeah. and uh yeah i mean i mean she's been super supportive obviously when i started doing the comedy you know, it was always like, okay, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not afraid to embarrass myself no more. That's right. But I did ask her, and and this is the true story. I said, do I embarrass you? She said, nah. Oh, I said, are you sure? I said, do I embarrass you with anything? She's like, nah. You're funny. You always made me laugh. I yeah. said, then I don't give a fuck what anybody else says. That's that. right. Yeah. Then that's when I decided just to go hard. It was like, okay, cool. If she approves, if I don't embarrass my wife, I don't care who else. That's right. If anybody else has to say anything. Yeah. You know? So when was your actual first stand-up? My first stand-up was in Las Vegas last month, I believe. I think it was last month, just a month and a half recent. ago. Where at? Uh, we did it in Vegas. We did it at a charity event. It was a charity event. So it was, you know, was PG-13. I, uh -huh. I saw you post yeah, it. Yeah, it was for my friends at our Project Hope. So Project Hope has been a huge blessing to me. They are the ones that are uh, doing the COVID. I was really active in the streets in the community when COVID hit, mm -hmm. you know. And this was at a time, at the, you know, this was at a time too when I had just, um, the comedy stuff was, was doing good. Yeah. I, I was getting views and people were starting to recognize me and they were starting to give me props for my career, but I still wasn't making like money. Yeah. I, I was still shooting like hella music videos a month. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at, at this time I was leasing a house with Baby Bash, mm -hmm. you know, cause he was like, yo, why don't you help me lease this crib? And whenever I come into LA, I just take up a room and you, know, you and your family could stay. I was like, That's perfect. Right. Oh yeah. So we did that, and unfortunately, that fell through. The ex like we had to leave that house because they were gonna sell it the same week that COVID hit, like oh, when damn. they shut it down. Yeah. 
So he had left to Houston. He was like, you know what? I'm going to just leave to Houston. I just bought my house over there. He's all like, but we, we got about another week here. And I was like, oh, I'm probably just going to leave. Yeah. You know, so we're I'm literally packing my shit up, bro. Like, it's raining, COVID. Shit. The stores are going crazy. And it's just a tough time, you know, because I'm here I am again. Things are going right, but nothing's paying bills yet. Right. And it's still hard, you know. And I remember, you know, like... You, you know, you feel like as as a, as as a husband and as, as as a father, you know, you it's like a failure again. Like, okay, here I go back in my in laws' crib. You know, and I remember I was I had a really bad attitude during that time. It was like right when it like March, May, all that. I had a really bad attitude, and I just had a really, you know, and I was I remember I was stuck in the room for like five days, just thinking like, okay, what is my next move? And my next move was to just chin up kind of shit. Okay, man, you're gonna get out of this rut. Be glad that you have somewhere to stay. Be glad that your kids aren't in the street and, and, and just kind of be positive about it. So from one day to the next, man, I got up, I cut my hair. I, I was, I was, yeah, dude, I got up, cut my hair, and I started just doing skits again. And then I had seen a post by Project Hope and how they were doing stuff in the community. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get involved. Nice. I don't got much, but I'm just going to give them my time and go and help out the hospitals or help out here and just – do whatever I can, get food in the community. So I started doing like, you know, serving work, you know, just charity. helping them out. Yeah, just charity work, man. Just yeah. going out there and helping the community and giving out food because a lot of people didn't have money. They had lost their jobs. And fortunately for me, man, I was living on my in-laws. So whatever we had, it was enough for the family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I still had food and it was still good. And then, uh, so Project Hope had an event at uh, AV Chevy, AV Chevrolet in, in, in Lancaster. And the dude, the owner, my boy Justin, he was he was like, yo, man, I've been seeing your skits. <laughs> I was like, okay, no, no, no. And no, in fact, he was like, uh, he was like fixing boxes with me, yeah. right? And I didn't know who he was. And I was like, oh, cool, man. So wait, man, uh, shit, what do you do here? Like watch cars and shit? <laughs> I, true story, dog. True story, right? True story. <laughs> true story. And he's like, nah. I own it. That's oh, right. And I was like, I was like, ah, that's crazy player. <laughs> hey man, pass me a box. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, <laughs> you know t- typical Mexican. I was like, ha, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Look, hey, pass me a box, man. Come on, man. We need more fucking milks, man. People need their milk. Hurry up, man. And he's like, and my boy pulls up. He's like, nah, 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 bro. Hey, uh, hey, Chris, uh, Concrete, man. Uh, this is Justin, man. He he owns a dealership. And I was like, oh shit. He's like, don't even trip. Come into my office. Yeah. And I was like, cool, because this is hot as fuck out here, man. Let's just go. You know. <laughs> so we go into his office. He's like, bro, I love what you're doing. I love your comedy. Yeah. He's all like, I want to give you a deal at Chevy, man. I want you to be the face of the dealer. Nah. I want you to do comedy. Yeah. And I said, all right. I was like, how much are we talking about? He's like, you wrote. I said, shit, we can start right now. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. I'll fucking go out there and fucking. <laughs> yeah, I'll go out there and just start acting dumb, you yeah, know? Yeah. So they cut the deal and then it was off to the races from there. After that, it was just, you know, and, and I don't want to say it was because of AV Chevy, but just, the, you know, and I'm still like this now. Like I, I haven't stopped doing charity, and I, and I think once you put that certain energy out, and back. and you start stop being selfish, yes. you know, I mean, because you know, like I've always felt like I've been selfish. You know, I've I, I've always, I've always dreamed of like being the next big actor, and I've put my family second for a long time because I'm selfish of what I want to accomplish in life, and I think now I'm starting to pay that back to to my kids and. You know, being able to take them to certain places, and when they see a toy at the store, it's like, "Daddy can buy it today. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Daddy can really get that today. I can get you two of those now." How many yeah. kids you got? Yeah. You know, I got three boys, man. Oh yeah. damn, these yeah. boys, huh? Malachi, Caleb, and Christian. Yeah. Do, do they follow you on Instagram? Nah, <laughs> nah. Actually, my kids. Nah, actually, my kids think I, my kids think I'm like. Not the cool dad. Uh, yeah, you embarrass cool them. You embarrass them. Yeah, because they're like, Dad, like, come on, Dad. You have like a hundred thousand. FGTV has like one oh, billion followers, Dad. It. You know? They be sick on the haterade. Yeah, so I'm just like, all right, you know, all right. Like last night, I I, I got points. No, yeah. this morning, because I did a, I was a part of a cartoon called um, Hella Black Mexican where I played Theo Maniacs. Oh, yeah. And uh, so my kids are like, that's cool, Dad. Dad's in a cartoon, you yeah, know. Like yeah. so, I I, I kind of score because you know, like they're yeah. kids, man. They're like yeah. you know, they hear, they're seeing their dad on on the I screen see, as yeah. a cartoon, and then they hear my voice, and they're just kind of like, like, oh, that's what, that's. What's Tio Maniax? What's, what's he do? Uh, so Tio Maniax is an actual character from a movie that's coming out that I did called Orchata and Oat Milk. Okay. And it's uh, Tio Maniax is how's basically. Talk, how's his voice? Hey, what's up, Perrito? <laughs> <laughs> Ponte trucha, homie. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Theo Maniacs is also a uh, he's also a con artist. So in the movie, um, yeah, I am. Uh, he's I definitely know. confused with his sexuality. Oh, oh Jesus! So Theo just imagine, so just imagine a '90s cholo acting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, acting great. a little that's, that's like on the, the soft arena. side, on the soft side. You know what I'm saying? He's a, you know, he's, a, you know what I'm saying? He's, a, he's a little on the soft side and a little, a little flamboyant at times. <laughs> I was like being at the arena in the nineties. Yeah, the arena in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So you see the cholos. Yeah, no, but I, you know, so it 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 was fun to play that character because, yeah. you know, I played other characters like you know I, I've been in movies where I had to be a cholo and la chingada and you yeah. know so it's it's but it was cool to kind of like go back and forth from like two two characters. I, I kind of really had a, like like it's kind of like a split personality. Yeah, and you know, it was challenging because it's like here I am. I'm focused on trying to make sure that I get one character right. And okay, oh, now I gotta make sure I get two characters right yeah. within the split, like splits of a second. Right. You know? And so that was cool. And then so the so the movies, uh, the trailer comes out, I believe, tomorrow or next week. Nice. Um, and so the character is so good that the creators of the movie were like, "Hey, we have a cartoon called Hello Black Mexican. We're gonna take that character and make and an, an animate you into this character." Uh -huh. nice. And then yesterday when it released. Uh, we were talking to the producers and they're going to make it a reoccurring character now. That's so, what's up, brother. Yeah, so it's cool, man. So, yeah, it, you know, man, like, I'm a cartoon, bro. Like, I, you know, it's like last. Where do like, you see this show at? You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, so, so, right now it's on YouTube. They're working on deals to get it, like, on, 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 uh, you know, uh, all the other platforms. platforms. Yeah, you know, like, or, or maybe in Comedy Central, but, uh, like, you know, like they're taking their time and being very meticulous and, on, on, on they want to build the brand before they. Of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I was like, I, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm down to ride it. Let's go. You know, and and it's been fun, dude. Like it's it, it was fun shooting it, and dude, come on, like last year, dude, I'm crying in my, in my mother in law's fucking room, <laughs> literally. And then this year, I'm fucking like it's on top of the world. I like it. Life changes, man. Yeah, life changes, changes, and don't quit, brother. And lives you know? lives put me in dark places, but you know, God never let me there. He always he's always like, look, bro. Like I always felt like you know, and I know it's cliche, but it's like, you know, he ain't gonna give you the. I felt like if Look, bro, if I would have got money mm -hmm. in my 20s, yeah. I would have killed myself. Oh, yeah. You would have gone hard in the paint. Mm -hmm. Dude, the, the story would have been concrete. Beretta found at the Great West, uh, Best Western uh, yeah. with three hookers and cocaine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> three kids. Hey, and, and a boner. And a boner still going. Well, like, I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm just saying, but like, who knows, man? I, I would have yeah, I partied sure. it off. I would have been, you know, whatever the case, man. I would have oh, been, yeah. I would have been immature with the money and I wouldn't know what to do or whatever the case. Not that I'm getting money now, but it, it's, it's now getting, you know what to do with it when it but does Yeah, come. but it's like, I'm not hurting right now. Like, no. I'm good. Like, the rent's paid. Like, I'm not it, abundantly rich or nothing. It's not like what, that. What but it is, you are appreciated now. But I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So, it, so I'm so. glad God was like, just chill, bro. I'm, yeah. We gonna get it right, but when you get it right, where, you know? Yeah. Where? Because I see you and Baby Bash are real good buddies, homie. Yeah. Where did you and him meet at when, he was, when you were touring? Yeah, so the first time I met Bash was in 2007, and I had opened up for him at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. All right. And uh, so I'm at the time. He's hot at that time. Oh, dude, he's yeah, he's, he's baby. Hot. He's he's he's, he's, he's on. Hot, he's right? on. He's on. Right? Hot, right. So I remember uh, I've always been like the supporting act. So he, as as I'm on stage with my band, rocking out hip hop, kind of like Chicano, like hip hop, and really really like it, it was new, right? So he, okay. I remember he pulled up and he's like, I see him off stage and he's like. He's like bobbing his head, and I'm like, "Oh shit, that's Bash. He's right there on stage, he, and he's bobbing to our head. shit." Yeah, like, yeah. and I remember we finished up, and he was like, "Hey man, you guys got some dope shit." Mm -hmm. He was like, "Yo, why don't you guys come and smoke with me?" And I was like, "Bet." He was already high. Yeah. Right. So we finish up whatever, and then you know, like we're walking through the crowd and shit, you know, and we're like, you know, we're walking with them, and then you know, we get to the place where the VIP's at, and he goes in, and then the dude's like, "Wait, hold on, stop." <laughs> And I was like, no, 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 hey, I'm with Bash. Yeah. I was like, Bash, Bash. And he was like, what's up? He was like, I was like, we're going to smoke. He's like, you know them? He's like, nah. Yeah. I was like, come oh, on. I was like, Bash. Oh, Dude, just totally broke my heart. <laughs> my whole crew was happy. I was like, come on, because I was standing there. I was like, come on, we're going to go smoke with Bash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was so high. He was like, nah. I don't know. Uh, I, don't know. Yeah. I was like, Bash, we just, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, and then he got on, and then at the end of the show, I was like, "Yo, man, like I was the band." Oh shit, what's up, dog? You know, so he's always high and shit. You we know? made eye contact. Yeah, we made eye you know? contact. But you know, and then and then time passed. You know, we just kept seeing each other in circles and shows and studios yeah. and whatnot. And then in 
two like in 2005 or six or something i started i started shooting music videos for him and you know that's where he was like oh what are you doing now and i was like oh man i'm shooting music videos i'm doing this and i'm working with that person and he's like oh really he's like show me some of your work and i show him some of the work he's like cool let's work yeah that's right and then it just kind of rekindled the relationship you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. so but yeah like i've been knowing these guys for like years for some man. time now yeah i was gonna say yeah. sorry not 2000 uh 2013 2014 around there that's when we kind of really started working together and not just like mutual right you know people in the industry that know yeah. each other you know yeah yeah so what would you tell to a young Kelly Mac, as I like to call him, is as far as trying to get into the business, what's one of the things you they should be prepared for? Whether it's music, whether it's rap, any, anything in entertainment. What should they be prepared for? Yeah. I mean, there's not much. <laughs> oh, you got to answer that call, uh, man. You got to put that call on, <laughs> fucking speaker. Hey, Bash. Bash. Hey, he's going to say he don't know. He's going to say, yeah. he's gonna say Bash. Full. Nah, he's. can you hear me? <laughs> he's, uh, he's hello he, he's probably listening hello i don't know i don't know if it's the wi-fi or do i need wi-fi in here you don't need wi-fi bash uh, he hung up call um, back if you're listening <laughs> yeah right right now nah, because you know you know you know what's funny is that he just did an interview with be real right and they used the clip of the interview and i called him during the interview <laughs> and he didn't answer the phone but i'm gonna show him oh, that you that... should answer your friend's phone call yeah right ah. bash that's it. Please leave your message. Oh my God. Oh. Look at that. Just sent me. Just, he's like, oh, my, imagine he's like, oh, my bad. Do I butt dialed? He, he, he did the same thing at the club or when you guys were at the concert. I don't know that guy. It was, it was wrong. Number, see. I don't know. He, he, he might just send me straight to voicemail again. He yeah. probably, but anyways, yeah. So he just, they literally, B Real just posted that on his page and it was like, and it was me. And it was me. And I was like, he's like, oh man, Concrete's calling me. Should I answer? They're like, Nah, you probably don't have to answer right now. <laughs> I was like, was like, why'd you guys post? Why would you guys post that? Yeah, yeah. Like, just totally gave me no clout whatsoever. <laughs> busting your balls, my boy. Busting your balls, yeah, man. That's yeah. love. That's love. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not. But they're really cool about it. And yeah, man. So it's just you know, um, that's how that's how I met those guys. You know. Yeah. The the one thing, just the splits. Oh yeah. So sorry. So what can I tell? Yeah. Wait, wait, what are you yeah. gonna tell them? Don't answer the phone during an interview. Nah. <laughs> Uh, what can they expect? I mean, but what's something that they should be prepared for? How about that? Is um, failure? <laughs> you know, there's there's more there's more misses than hits in this, bro. That's right. You know, and that's in anything. Yeah, you know, like I mean, well, not in anything because I'm sure heart transplants don't really go that way. It's like eh, <laughs> I'm I, sure the first couple that died I'm, didn't uh, go too well. Imagine the doc's like, eh, I'm gonna be honest, man. The last six I did didn't go so well, but this one, nah. <laughs> no. But I'm saying, like, you know, like especially in the entertainment industry, you know, because it's all about creative, and you know, you're. To me, it was like I, I was always trying to see what what stuck. Yeah. Right. You know, and when you're trying to find yourself, when you're trying to figure out your what's gonna work for you, you know, you're always throwing throwing darts. And I see, I see life as a game of darts, right? The more darts you have, the more chances you give yourself at hitting that bullseye. You know, a lot of people, they get the first three darts and then they quit. As opposed to, nah, get another three more. Yeah, exactly. If you don't hit it, get another three more and get another three more. And that's how I see life. And I never stopped, you know. And, like, and, and you know, like I have a very competitive spirit. And, and whatever I want to do, like, I don't let my kid even win at, like, Super Mario, bro. <laughs> like I take him down, bro. You taking him down? I t oh, connect four, bro. He better come with that shit, bro. You're going down, kid. You're going down. I I, hey, bro. I don't care if you're three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like because because that's that's what the world is, though, man. Yeah, sir. You're grimy. Yes, sir. If it ain't you, with somebody else. Yeah, yes, sir. You know, and and you know, like you know, like when you like you know, like, do, you, do you remember that teacher in school? You're like, I'm trying to prepare you for the real oh, world. I used to be like, yeah. man, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck you know. Yeah. You a teacher? Uh -huh. Like, you know, what the fuck <laughs> do you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, they are. Yeah. They're trying to prepare us for what the fuck is about to happen once you move out and you're trying to figure it out. And then you figure out that people are fucking mean <laughs> in this world yeah, uh -huh. yeah. and how this world is just full of shit that you're just going to have to try to maneuver around, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, man. So be, be prepared to fail and also be prepared to know that it's not the end of it. Yeah. When something That's doesn't right. go your way. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you just got to keep pushing, you know, I, I, I've, I've, it, it, just everything that I've always tried to do, man. Like, it, obviously, I never tried to do something that was out of my comfort zone, or like, or that I, I, I don't have no interest in it. 
I've always been the person that if I'm going to do something, I really want to do it. Yeah, you go 100 yeah. And I want to be the best at it, bro. Yeah. In my head. <laughs> That's all that matters. In my head. <laughs> That's not all that matters. No, check this out. No, check this out, bro. So I was, <laughs> so, so I was playing at the adult basketball league, yeah. right? And in my head, fool, <laughs> you were the I am fucking Michael Jordan in that yeah, shit. Boy. <laughs> And I'm over here dribbling this shit. Yes. Wah, 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 wah. And the yeah. dude's like, yo, pass the ball. I was yeah. like, man, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what do you mean, pass the ball? Yeah, yeah. Like, go get it. Go steal the ball. You got to get a rebound, my dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, what play we running? My play. Yeah, yeah. Running my play. Uh, Isolation uh, concrete. Yeah. Everybody move out of the way. <laughs> Yeah. I got this bitch. It's like I think I, I think the highest scoring was like three points, and it was because I got fouled. I got fouled. The ball went in like ran like the ball went in that what a chiripa way, and I had a free throw. And I hit the free throw, and then I think I think I had that was it. That was it. Bash, what up? Yo yo, you working? Yeah, I'm at I'm actually at an interview right now, and you're live on the podcast, and not like you on the Be Real show. Yeah. I answered your phone call. Yeah. Say what's up to the homies from American Cholo. What's, what's, going, what's on, going on, Bash? What up, though? What up, though? Oh, much good. love, player. Much, much love, love, man. Yeah. <laughs> right on, doggy. Right on, right on. I start, sorry to interrupt the interview, yeah. man. I, uh, I just want to tell Concrete he spelled something wrong on the video. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's right, me. Oh, shit. I got to go. Hey, my, my reception is bad, dog. <laughs> That's right, man. Yeah. I got you, man. We'll get that fixed and patched up and right over tonight, brother. I got you. That's right. All right, guys. Right. <laughs> kind of Peace. You get. Yeah, man. So that's Bash right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, brother. So, yeah. like I said, I mean, just your energy, brother. The first three minutes we fucking met. I was like, this was cool as fuck. Bro. Yeah. He's cool as fuck. And your energy is great, fucking concrete. I'm so happy to see somebody from... You're from the Valle, homie. You're from my area. This is it right here, man. Right. So to, to be as, as successful as you are, you are, as you're becoming, as you're blowing up, we're going to support you every which way. Thank so you, brother. Now, what we want to find out is where can people find you as far as Instagram? What's your next show? What are your moves? Yeah. That way my, yeah. my followers can follow you. Yeah. So my next uh, my next show um, I have tomorrow. We are um, we are hosting, me and Jeff Valentino, we're hosting the Freestyle Fest with uh, Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, uh, 17,000 plus tickets sold, man. It's a sold out event. It's crazy, nice. bro. It's, it's probably going to be the biggest crowd we've That's rocked. This weekend? That's tomorrow. tomorrow That's player. tomorrow. Yeah. That's tomorrow, right. man. So 17,000 people, man. And what are you it's doing? It's going to be, I'm hosting the event. That's oh, right. Oh, shit. Where's that? Uh, so it's in uh, it's in Norco at yeah, the Silver Lakes at the Silver Lakes. Um, man, it's it's exciting, man. And then we take a break. Uh, well, we we'll, we'll take a break from doing shows but um we leave for our tour on the 17th to the 26th so we're doing a southwest tour where we're gonna hit uh tucson phoenix albuquerque dallas uh, uh odessa houston san antonio up, brother with the same thing you're going with stevie being them no 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 oh, so no 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 so we're going and basically what we're gonna do is that you know like my idea was always you know like there's so many people you could just talk to on instagram but you know my idea was to literally go and shake hands with people that follow me in all these different That's states right, mm -hmm. and, and and really just pull up you yeah. know, and it's and it's um, you know, that's why we call it the pull up tour. Yeah, because we're just gonna pull up, pull up, pop up a tent, and come and say hi, buy a sticker, buy a t shirt, take you know, take a picture, get to meet me, and yeah. you know, I I just want to say thank you for following that's me. What's up, brother? Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying, up, and just kind of hopefully we build some long lasting relationships, you know, with you know, with with some fans out here. Hey, I saw you actually had a YouTube channel. You don't really post on that YouTube channel, do you? Nah, because like I think my strongest point right now is like Instagram and Facebook. That's well, huge. Like my my Facebook grew like forty thousand followers in the last six months. So oh. it's like I like, I feel like you know like I'm a it's different world. I'm a slow burn. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I, I, I feel like people are. It's it, it's weird. Cause I, like I hate to sound like this, I'm and, it. but <laughs> I'm the first of my kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. And when you're the first of something, it's gonna take people a little bit to understand. Yeah. What's going on? You know, I consider myself to be to the likes of a Jim Carrey, to the likes of, you know, those kind of comedy greats yeah. that have thousands of characters yes, and can not make you can just be different people and make you laugh yeah you know and i and i and i truly feel like i'm i'm one of the first ones chicanos to do that uh you know i mean i mean there's other guys obviously like you no know, frankie quinones but i have the right to feel how i feel yeah, of course, right. man. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> nothing against anybody else. That's right, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I love, player. you know, and I, dude, I, I love, Fra like, dude, f in, in fact, Frankie, he just, he just uh, hit me on Instagram yesterday, huh? Yeah. And he was like, bro, you're fucking hilarious. I was like, what? Frankie, no. <laughs> hey, Frankie's been ghosting me, for. Yeah, Frankie. Can, and I'm I was like, and I was like, dude, I can't believe, like, he's like, yo, like, do you're funny, man. I'm following you. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. Here's yeah. this, here's this dude right. that I look up to telling me I'm funny, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, there's been other guys, you know, guys from San Fernando right. that have reached, that are huge comedians, nice. yeah. you know, uh, you know, to the likes of George and, you know, a bunch of other comedians that have reached out and they're like, yo, bro, like, I see you. Support. Just yeah. just know that I see you. That's oh, right. Yeah. That and don't good. let me down. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, like, I mean, to me, like, for sure, like, when George hit me up, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, we're we're, yeah, we're doing something right. right. And the fact oh, that we're from the same city, it was, yeah. it, it even felt more. I was like, okay, cool. Like, right. you know, I, I always feel like, look, man, like, I, I don't want anybody to pass the torch. I just want you to light mine. Yeah. Uh, That's right. <laughs> nice, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's yeah. just that's just the reality of it. Like you don't gotta pass no torch, bro. Your crown is your crown. Yeah, that's right. Bro. But just you know, yeah. Show me the way. That's me right. the way. Let, let me know how to get my crown. Yeah, that's you right. know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And and that's all I ask for from anybody that's at the level of where I want to be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because in this game, there's no handouts, bro. I'm not expecting George to give me a handout. I'm not expecting to the likes of Fluffy to give me a handout or Frankie or nobody to give me a handout right. because these guys have built their careers on their own their dime own. Yeah, exactly. and on their own two feet. And that's what I plan to do with mine. Sure. And I think when you do something like that, you know, that's when I'll be able to sit at the table with them and be like, ah, uh -huh. we here. I earned it. Yeah. I earned this. Yeah. I earned this seat. This spot. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, uh, that's what I plan to do for San Fernando in my community. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's the right. Vibe, homeboy. You know, hey, man, I want to thank you, Concrete, for coming through, man. I really appreciate oh, yeah. it, man. You're you're a great guest. You dropped some knowledge, and man, I just want to thank you. Thank you, man. Much. Thank you guys for having me, man. This yeah. shit was dope, man. Even though I just met you a couple days ago. <laughs> Are you in love yet? <laughs> <laughs> love at first sight, baby. Love at first sight. <laughs> American show, we in right. here. Come on, baby. All right, man. Uh, Webo, puto A18. <laughs> way. Thank you guys, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Oh, no, last time somebody gave me shift. I got to hang. Do this. Uh, well, Look at this fight, He shook his hand. You know, the yeah. haters gonna hate. Yeah, yeah, All right, Chris, yeah. get us out of here. Thank you guys for yeah, tapping right. in, yeah. man. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Catch you guys later, players.